So you guys might be wondering why the new Gay Guardian sleeves that Konami is supposed to release this month only come with 50 sleeves. There's a reason for that, and that's because Konami knew, well, you know, if we can't give them enough sleeves to fit a main deck and an extra deck, we can give them enough sleeves to fit the perfect main deck for Gay Guardian which I've personally found to be 50 cards. Now, it sounds kind of crazy. I know, 50 cards is a lot, and the deck already struggles with making boards and breaking boards. I think I found a good solution for that, and I think the solution is Small World. Small World creates so many lines and bridges into Keeper of Dragon Magic, and Keeper of Dragon Magic, I think, at 40 cards, it's hard to use this card at full potential. It's like you have to open one of your Kazijin, Suijin, names and keyboard drag magic to use at full potential but at 60 cards where you're allowed to play a few more bricks a few more fringe cards to make your strategy work you can unlock the full potential with keeper dragon magic using predator plant using fusion destiny if you don't have fusion destiny you can use neos fusion fusion deployment there's a lot of routes that this card can go into so we're going to go into those combo lines later but like even with small world even at 40 cards i think this card could be solid because now it's like we have lines where really other than ghost ogre which i think ghost ogre the only thing that it could go into is is Song of the Thunder, and then Song of the Thunder, because it's level seven, it could get tank. You want to get the Keeper of Dragon Magic first turn. All of your names can go into either tank or into Keeper of Dragon Magic because they're all level seven. And the best bridge for Small World that you're gonna find out is actually Heavenly Zephyr Miradora, because Miradora is level seven and it's a dragon, which Keeper of Dragon Magic is also a dragon. So that means any level seven in your deck can go into Miradora, and then Mirador can get you Keeper of Dragon Magic. Same thing for Ghost Mourner. Ghost Mourner's Wind. Wind can go into Mirador. Mirador get you a dragon. Even Ash Blossom, surprisingly enough, because it's zombie, it can go into Shadow Ghoul. And Shadow Ghoul, um, because it's dark, Shadow Ghoul could, could get you tank. So Ash can only get you tank, but that's still not the worst scenario in the world. Which is also why we're maxing out on Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. We're there. This deck has never seen more level sevens. I'm I'm on 10, 10 level sevens in the Gate Guardian engine and three more hand traps that, like, although they are useful, like it's pretty easy to Sacred Sword them. Like I think Sacred Sword is one of the best things that you can do besides cast your rebirth for getting utility out of just opening your Gate Guardian names. The priority is make combined, draw two cards, and then. The lowest priority is normal summon the Kazajin. I think, well, maybe maybe normal summon Kazajin might be more important. But yeah, that's the whole gist of the deck. We're gonna go go into combos, and basically we've taken out the, the synchro package entirely and we're focusing more on links and exceeds. Volo Fernigus, we only have him is because he can potentially become a quick effect if he has a dragon as material, and Miradora is a level seven dragon. Now, I've never been able to resolve Miradora in a duel yet. This this build is all just theory, but I think the theory is solid enough to where it could work. So this is the basic combo for the deck. I think if you draw Keeper Dragon Magic with a name, this is how you start. You go discard the name, and I've already showed you guys this in my Gate Garden combo video, but, um, or I showed you how it starts, right? You Keeper Dragon Magic, you discard your Sewage and Cosmic or Song of the Thunder, and you get to revive it later with the same Keeper Dragon Magic. This time we're gonna search Instant Fusion, and the reason why we're searching Instant Fusion is because um, after Kalos, Ambulomades is the best level five fusion starter in the entire game of Yu-Gi-Oh! And it kind of carries this deck if it resolves, right? Because it gets to add a uh, Bufo Lakula. Bufo Lakula basically is a fusion spell in the Pendulum Zone. It's a searchable fusion spell in the Pendulum Zone. So even if you hard open this, it, it can still be useful because you can make a card like Starving Venom. Like you can make a raw Starving Venom if you control two dark monsters. I would say you can make a raw um, Guardian Chimera, but it, it only gets its effect if it's made off of Polymerization. So it's it's not as good. So we keep our Drag Magic back, the Kazijin, and then we use Ambulomady's second effect to tribute Keeper our Drag Magic after it's revived Kazijin to summon out Darling Tonya Cobra from deck. And the reason why that's significant is because Darling Tonya Cobra can search another fusion spell card from deck to hand. And this time we're gonna add fusion deployment, fusion deployment, reveal combined, combined, gets a sewage in, wind and water, and then dragos sepalia. And now we have three negates off of basically a one and a half card combo. So this can be done if you open sewage in or kazijin with a keeper of dragon magic, right? 
So now I'm going to show you what happens if you just draw Keeper Dragon Magic by itself. Now I'm making this example um, with three cards in hand just to show you the, the potential follow up. But this is this is our first turn, right? We go Ambulomates, Beef uh, Bufo, and now we won't be able to get the revive off of Keeper, but we still get the Darling Tony Cobra, and now we get Fusion Destiny. So basically, depending on what you open, you always have a good card to search off of Darling Tony Cobra. Either you search Polymerization, or you search Fusion Deployment, or you search Fusion Destiny based on the needs of what you, um, based on what you need for that turn. And now we get to make a uh, Dragosapelia using Bufo, and then. Um, you get to make DPE using Fusion Destiny. Now, as, as long as you remember, Fusion Destiny is the very last thing that you have to do uh, or that you can do in your turn. Like, I think it works. Um, you saw Fusion Destiny at two in my list. You could bump it up to three. I just think two is best because hard opening this card is great, but you don't want to see it late game. Like, it kind of has big diminishing returns after a while. Like, we'd have to play like Garura or something to shuffle back some of these um, Destiny Heroes. Maybe we could play like Lubelion, like Albaz and Lubelion or something. So like we could get more follow-up, but once you use one Fusion Destiny, the rest of them in your, in your deck are completely dead. So that's why I'm saying like maybe Souls is still worth considering, but this deck is made to be budget. Like, I don't, I don't know if you guys, I, I, I probably forgot to realize that, I forgot to mention that, but this is a budget combo Fusion deck. Um, that was the intention going into this. There's definitely a, a non-budget build, but this is supposed to be a budget build. Like none of these cards are worth over five bucks each, like not even DPE. Um, yeah, like nothing here is worth a lot of money. Um, so, all right, so let's say they, they go through turn two, we pop DPE, DPE comes back, right, standby phase. And so basically next turn, what I'm trying to put down here is that you can Celestial draw two, and the draw two off of Celestial is really significant for a deck like Gate Guardian that loses its steam quickly and needs a lot of um, a lot of resources to make a comeback. So getting so getting draw twos off of Sacred Swords or off of Celestial is something that you really want to look forward to. Um, also, Destiny Hero Dasher is really significant as well because if you draw one of your pieces in in draw phase and you have dasher in your graveyard you can just summon out the piece which is really good like you can summon out the piece and you could still get the celestial effect later that turn it's it's really good um so now we can poly right i make guardian chimera and then guardian chimera can pop whatever they have, you know, whatever the opponent has, draw you some cards. We use two monsters from hand at that point. And then we also had like, I, I can't show it now, but we had all three materials engraved to make gate, Gar gate guardians combined. And like, that's why I think this deck can do a lot of damage if it, if it resolves. So you're probably gonna tell me Nistro, like, isn't a deck kind of vulnerable? Like, doesn't it lose like multiple negates or like one, one ash on a, small world and it's like well small world is actually kind of goaded because if they ash it you don't lose another card in hand it's not like sign up mining where you have to discard for cost everything about small world is part of the effect so if it gets negated you only go you only lose the small world you don't go minus one on top of small world so this time we're gonna small world from Meridor. we banished the sewage in because i didn't want to get rid of causagen yet and i know we play double of each that's like we're playing double of each because we play small world like in case we draw one and we want to use small world with it like it's it's not a complete brick right like we're not shutting off half the fusions in our action or half the gate guardian fusions because we small world for one monster so now we're gonna get our plays going right so this is just a test hand so we got ambulomates coming out keeper bringing out the causagen making wind and water and of course this deck loses to Nib. Um, that, you know, that much is obvious. Uh, Dragostopelia, if they see you search for Fusion Destiny, they might hold the Nib until you resolve Fusion Destiny. So I think that's something that you gotta keep track of. But now th this going second is going against four interruptions, right? Dragostopelia, DPE, and then two negates off of Wind and Water. So we've already negated the small world. And look at that, we still had five cards in hand. 
it's great to have a card that can do so much, but also be low commitment if it gets negated. So now we just hard make Gate Guardians combined. And uh, I did kind of goof here because I forgot DPE doesn't target. So uh, we just ended up making Water and Thunder. And although Water and Thunder's effect is negated because Dragos of Pele is on field, um, if you chain it, it, the monster's attack still becomes zero. It doesn't matter if his effect gets negated or something. If you chain his effect to something that negates him, the monster's attack still, still goes to zero. So... Yeah. Now I'm just kind of like making a what if scenario, you know, um, heavy tank was a really good card for getting rid of the wind and water. And this is why I kind of want to have tier limits in the deck, because like, what do you do with all these fusions in the graveyard? They kind of just sit there. So I want to have a little more recursion, maybe maybe Havnus plus Sheeran or maybe um, just Rhino Heart and and Sheeran. Like, well, Rhino Heart has to be there anyway, but maybe Sheeran plus Rhino Heart plus Havinus or Rhino Heart plus Sheeran. I just want to have an an alternate line of play for all my fusions getting sent to the fucking graveyard without having to play something like Pot of Avarice. So I think Tier Limits might be able to fix up that one problem I have with this deck. But otherwise, I love the way that this deck has turned out so far. Starving Venom, one of my favorite cards. Um... So I, I made it attack into the Sujin because when it destroy destroys all special monsters your opponent controls. Um, also, if you mix this with DPE, it's like a board wipe for free because DPE can just pop Starving Venom without, you know, without it having to go into battle. So you can potentially OTK your opponent thanks to that. And you can make Starving Venom copy the effect of one level five or higher monster your opponent controls. Um, but it copies the name. So that means that if you already use a card, like let's say I copy Heavy Tank, like I can't use regular Heavy Tank and Starving Venom effect of Heavy Tank in the same turn because they'd be treated because they have the same name and you can only use the effect of this card's name once per turn, right? So you wouldn't be able to do that. But if they have something like, I don't know, um, my fucking Dragostopalia, then that's different. But I mean... Dragos to pay, I could just negate Starving Venom. Anyway, not important. Um, board wipe, and then we attack with Gate Guardians combined. And we did kind of lose here still, but it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's less about this late game. I just wanted to show what the deck could potentially do against interruptions. Also, the Gate Guardian mirror match is kind of miserable because um, it's all about who uses their combined first or who loses their combined first and who uses like some of these more fringe fusions first. Like if you use fucking your water and thunder first, you have no d defense when combined leaves field, right? Like this deck has already used this combined. And I don't think Gate Guardian Mirror Matches has, has even been theoried about because not enough people play this deck, but yeah. Really, really fun and interesting deck. And now that we've seen how the deck works, I really want to find space for more tech cards because I want the deck to have more follow-up play. So like, I think a late game fusion deployment could only go for Sangha, Suijin, or uh, Kazijin, where if we were to tech in a copy of Rhino Heart, you can make Rhino Heart if you're playing Tier Elements Kaleido Heart. So I think like maybe a copy of Rhino Heart and like Sheeran, could could do pretty well because then you can make like a second Dragos to Pelia. Um like late game it to like recycle some of your gate guardian fusions because recycling is one of the big problems, right? I think Cartesia is another one because Cartesia can um quick effect fusion summon during both your and your opponent's main phases. So you can make Grand Gugnol and I don't have to tell you how good Grand Grand Gugnol is, right? Like it can make so many potential plays with like Despian Luluwa Lilith and like milling things from your actual to the grave like Malong, or it can even mill Song of the Thunder if you need it. And lastly, Magnum the Reliever, which is something that's gonna come out of Dune. It's a kind of generic fusion monster that can either reuse or like it can use your polymerization one of two ways. You can either put it back into deck and draw a card, or you can banish it as a quick effect and then destroy a card on field when your opponent activates something. It's like there, there's a lot of potential for how this deck can go moving forward. I definitely think like there's a lot of merit to how this deck plays. 
And it's it's like the math kind of works in your favor. Like that's why we didn't draw too many bad hands because we're still on it's 12, that's 14 hand traps, 14 out of 50 cards. That's that's a pretty good chance that you're gonna see at least one, possibly even two. You could still play souls in this if you want to. Um, you could put back the Ryoku Guardian and the some of the Gate Guardian trap cards like Prey of Jirai Gumo if you want to play souls. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been your boy Nistro, signing out.